Joseph Rahal joins us with an impressive portfolio of successful real estate development through his family business, the Amira Corporation. This Wharton graduate says that when he invests, he invests in personality and drive. With over 14 years in management consulting, Raquel Moses has ample experience in strategy, marketing and sales, operations, mergers and acquisitions. So naturally, she knows exactly what she's looking for. Joe Pires is definitely known for his vivacious and outgoing personality, which also leaks over into his style of investing. Joe dabbles in a little bit of everything, from nightclubs to agriculture, and is always up for a new challenge. At 17, Sheldon Stevens started with a small kiosk that would grow into the Lollaby group of companies. Specializing in selling mobile devices and developing real estate, this young self-made investor is looking for stable and sustainable ventures. It is said that there is no key to happiness because the door is always open. Sadly, the door to funding your business idea is not open to everyone. Our first entrepreneur, Kivan Sinanan, is here tonight to get his foot through that door, seeking an investment for his award-winning invention that attaches to your keys. Will our investors see the value in this key finder, or will Kevin just get locked out? Let's take a look. Hi, investors. My name is Kivan Sinanan, and I'm the founder of Y Fumble. How many of us have keys? Okay. How many of us fumble with our keys? All the time, everybody. All the time, right? <laughs> we fumble with our keys because it may be dark, the keys look the same, sometimes you can't even remember which keys for which lock, and we may be in a rush. Wouldn't it be great if we can just attach a batteryless tag to our locks, a batteryless tag to our keys, and when we approach our locks, the key begins to blink just by pressing a button, and it will also work with multiple locks with different colors, and it works with your smartphone app. Therefore, you do not need to keep pressing a button every time. So introducing our patent pendant solution, Y Fumble. What makes Y Fumble great is that only one battery is required. So therefore, if you have five locks, five keys, only one battery is required. You do not need to change over your locks. You keep your existing locks. And in our next version, we will be utilizing vibration and sound to assist the visually impaired. I am asking for 50,000 US dollars in exchange for 20% of my company. It looked as if it was made away. Okay, I guess my question is, this is a local product? Everything here was done locally. You invented this? Yes. Okay. I, the first two versions I started building myself and eventually I had to hire an engineer to really do this because this takes a lot of thought process and smarts which he So has. I see you said it's patent pending. Patent how, pending. How, how long now it's pending? That were, the patent was first granted in September of last year so, and that is one year. Right. And so it will expire in September of this year but before that period I will be applying for a non-provisional patent, which will be full 20 years. Right. Oh, this is where, in England or in the US? Uh, the patent is in the US. So, so I see you asking for 50,000 US. How, mm. how would that be used? Okay, so we will be using uh, 20,000 to do one more round of R&D, which will help it do the mobile version to miniaturize this into a consumer product. and. Uh, that leaves 2,000 for around uh, sales and marketing. And the next 25,000 will be to produce 625 units at $40 each to, to sell to the market. $40 US or $40 TK? $40 US. US. Okay. That's Ca a cost to make it. It's a cost. That's a cost. It will sell for $60 US to sell. But the value is that for similar products like the home automation, the cheapest one is around 79 US, and that is still one lock, one key. Now, this is three locks, three keys for $60.
What, what's your background? How did you come up with this? Well, I come up with this because I need one. <laughs> right? And I refuse to paint my keys. <laughs> no, right? So it had to be a better way. I'm an engineer uh, by background uh, at the U University of the West Indies. So that's how I started building. Electrical engineer? Electrical and computer engineering. Forget that. Yes. Yeah. Your cost is $40 and you're going to sell it at 60 Correct. So that's a 50% a, a margin. Um, where Where's the distributor in here? Um, how are you getting this product to market? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, those are the sort of questions that you have to consider. What, okay. What? So initially, I am going to do market testing through Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Okay. Now, a drop shipper that in the US would charge about $3 per unit to be sold so that we're cutting down our margins further to $17, right? Now, what is going to happen is that as this becomes replaced by the, your cell phone, this becomes cheaper to make, right? So as we scale, our costs will come down. So it might cost $40 now, but as we get to that scale and let the smartphone handle all of the processing power, that could come down easily to $30. And we could still have so it. So, this being manufactured in the US or in China? It'd be manufactured in China but man and managed in the US. What that means is that it will come from the factory in China and warehouse in the US to distribute. How do you plan on marketing the product? Initially, it's through early adopters. Television ads, too expensive. Mm -hmm. It's much cheaper. Have to you started on. that process as yet? Uh, yes, I've started the process of, of doing the Indiegogo campaign, building the page, building some pre launch awareness. How long do you think it's going to take you to sell the, the 625 units that you need the money for? I could get that done and sold in six months. In six months? Yes. Well, Kivan, I can tell you that I really like this product. I mean, it's a personal problem of mine. I fumble with keys all the time. I actually think there's a broader application besides just com uh, households. I actually can see it working in a commercial setting where in warehouses and, and, and factories and so on, where people fumble for keys and lots of keys everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they have the labels on them all over the place and so on. I can really see that this has a, has a great potential. Uh, there's some risks involved Correct. and it's very uh, young in the production stages. So I would like to go ahead and offer you the 50,000 US, but for the, because of the risks involved, it will have to be for 40% of the company. Okay. Well, I thank you for your offer, but I would like to hear what the other investors, if they have anything to offer. Oh, no, no, no. No? No, no. <laughs> My offer is good for the next 15 seconds. <laughs> Children. <laughs> okay, would you like to go uh, 50,000 for 30%? No, 50,000 for 40% even. This thing is young, this thing is new. You're not in production. You have no proven sales. You have no proven mm -hmm. track record. I applaud your, your creativity and ingenuity, but it's not, it's not happening yet, is it? So for 40,000 US, 50,000 US for 40% of the so, company. Sorry, 50,000 US for 40% of the company. And I have you as an advisor and as a mentor. I'd be, I want to have a seat on the board as well. A seat on the board. Sure. Well done. Oh, deal? Yeah. So, deal. Deal. Well, <laughs> <all right. laughs> well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. Congratulations. Thank have a good partner to work with. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, Sheldon. <Charlotte. laughs> Hi. Hi, Kiva. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you very wow. much. Wow, 50,000 big ones. How does it feel? Yeah. It feels very exciting. And now we can get the ball rolling in manufacturing this and to get this into customers' hands because people want this, they need this. So, to go from that to your standing there, mm -hmm. And Joseph Rahal is telling you that you have 15 seconds Oof. to accept his offer. Mm. What was going through your head at that point? Well, I really wanted to hear what the other investors had to say, but if someone is telling you, you know what, they want this, they want to be a part of this, I knew he, he has some sort of, he saw something that I can't see. So. It will be very interesting to see what he brings to the table. I know he brings a lot to the table already. But it's going to be a very interesting uh, few months, if not years, in our business relationship. Why fumble? This is a good idea to solve a problem that many people have. 
The central issue in the success of this company, however, will be its patent. As was disclosed, the patent is pending. That could mean a lot of things. The investor would want to consider very seriously the validity of the patent and understand that a patent in the USA does not necessarily mean that you'll be protected everywhere else in the world. Patents may also have to be filed in Trinidad and in places like China where imitators are possible. So this is going to be a long-standing relationship between the two parties that's going to take up a lot of intellectual property issues along the way. Follow your heart, make your mark. Time to get ready, honey. Chase your dreams and make them happen. It's why you do what you do, and why we're here for you. For your dreams to come true, that's the power of love. Hey, your best interest at heart. Never miss a beat with the improved app from Yellow Pages. With new features like local news, flight and movie times, you're guaranteed to always be in the know with Yellow. Proximity search, gas station and ATM locations ensure you're in the right place at the right time. Download it from the Google Play Store or iTunes today. Job hunting is tough. You put yourself on a piece of paper and hope it will find you the perfect job. With so many options out there, it can be time consuming. What you really need is a simple way to find the job you're looking for. CaribbeanJobs.com has over 1,700 companies posting over 10,000 jobs. And it's easily accessed through either your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Find your fit at CaribbeanJobs.com and get the job you've been looking for. Do you own a business with 3 to 55 employees? Then Beacon's Be Better Plan is perfect for you. Our comprehensive group plan provides major medical and group life benefits at competitive prices designed to make your small business be better. Call us at 623-2266 for a quote today. He knows what it's like to get hit. He knows what it's like to win. The difference can be a split second if you don't move fast enough. When your body's pH balance is in sync, your whole system is in sync. An acidic diet slows you down. It's like extra weight you don't even know you're carrying. Drinking Puritas alkaline water means more hydration, more energy, more speed, more strength, more stamina. It means quicker muscle recovery and less soreness and injuries. If life comes at you swinging hard, your body needs to be balanced and dehydrated. All it takes is one split second. Do you have what it takes to be on the right side of that split second? Some things you just don't mess with. Shouldn't your hydration be one of them? Up next, we learn why beekeeping can be a sticky business. Entrepreneur Alvin Singh, who runs the Trinidad and Tobago Bee Company, hopes to entice our investors with a sweet deal. I'm willing to bet that he's more comfortable walking into a beehive than walking in to face our investors. Will they think his pitch is the nectar of the gods? Or will he just get stung? Let's see. Good day, my name is Alvin Singh. I'm the owner of Trinidad and Tobago Bee Company. My business is a simple business. We have hundreds and thousands of workers as we speak right now, working in our apries in several different locations here in Trinidad and Tobago. With the push in agriculture by previous government and this government, and the report in 2012-2015, they plan on increasing by 7,000 beehives. The problem is there's no one able to produce and fill this capacity that's needed. So beekeepers don't have a source of getting bees, to start. So that's one aspect of my business. My, my intention is to provide the bees and the hives for the beekeepers, the new upcoming beekeepers that are being trained by the ministry. And another part of it and the main push that we have is honey. One of the main products that we have in different locations because of the multi-floral parts of Trinidad and Tobago, 
we have different taste in honey. Our flow for the honey here, uh, roughly six hives will produce a barrel. That's 55 uh, US gallons of honey. It sells for about 33,000, roughly for that barrel. So what we want to do is to produce enough to have a stock in place. We want to make this affordable. We want to make this uh, so affordable that people will have a paradigm shift in this taste in here. So roughly we're looking at $100 per bottle. We think if that were to go out in the Trinidad and Tobago market, it will make an immediate impact. My, uh, my, my production started about two years now in different areas and it's grown. We are looking for, to set up a, a bigger place for warehousing the honey and storing it. This uh, piece of equipment was brought in from Boston. It's a, it's a piece of equipment they use to heat the honey so we prevent uh, fermentation. Um, you know, honey is a very interesting business here in Trinidad. Why is it that we have some of the most expensive honey in the region and in the world? In Trinidad and Tobago, we don't have disease like in the United States. We also have a strain of bees here that's highly productive. In, in 15 days, I can give you a barrel of honey. And no one here is looking at the export market. That's the difference with Trinidad and Tobago Bee Company. I have already touched bases with a big player in the Georgia area, the Savannah, Georgia area, and he has stores that runs into South Carolina. Alvin, tell me. What are you looking from the investors? What are you looking for? I'm looking for 1.2 million um, in, in capital to expand on buildings. I, I already have um, land, 2.5 acres, and a building existing. So the percentage rate I'm looking at is 20% on that 1.2. Who are the direct purchasers of the finished product? A lot of people are coming in and buying it by the case. Because of the price that I'm selling it at, they are buying it for themselves and also to resell. Oh, I see yes. you have some samples there. Let me have yeah, a taste. We'd love to yes. taste some. <laughs> okay. So we placed on here two samples, but they got a little smudged <laughs> in between. Right. So the darker one would be from the Blanchichers. So where's this one from? Both of them. The darker, one. Uh, the darker one's from Blanchichers, and the other one's from Kaiwal, second Kaiwal. Oh, okay. So, but they're different colors, I, yes, I understand right. that. Does that also represent a different taste? Yes. Okay. All right, so tell us how many cases of honey have you sold, for instance, in the last year? In the last year, I've produced about 25 barrels of honey. What sort of vol what revenue did you have last year in, in, in this? And what do you expect this year? I, mu I must have sold about 10, 10 barrels. 10 so barrels. Yes. So that's a, a, a total of um, 550 gallons. Yes. Uh, what are you getting per gallon? We, we were selling them, and on an average, we had broken them down uh, in the barrels and sold them for 26,000 per 26, barrel. 26,000 yes. per barrel? Yes. All right. So let's say you get this 1.2 million, and you've sold 10 barrels in the last year. Yes. How many barrels do you think you'll sell in the next year? if you had the money? I'm expecting 50 equivalent barrels. That is, we have to sell wholesale in bulk and we also have to do some uh, retail. So out of here. that 50 barrels, how yes. much do you want to retail and how much do you want to wholesale? We'd want to do a 50-50 on it. If, if we have the export market over there, then we can push it. If we don't get all of it sent over there, then we'll push it out into the market here. One would think that there may, there ought to be a focus on whether you're doing the retail or whether you're doing the wholesale so yes. you and I'm wondering yeah. if your business plan of having both of them is actually counterproductive because you're actually yeah. supplying your competitors, your comp your comp your competitors yeah. through the wholesale side mm -hmm. and then you're talking now about doing retail. I think you're a little bit confused, you know, you want to do three or four things, supply equipment, supply retail honey, yes. supply wholesale honey. You need an investor to come in and advise you from a sales and marketing point of view. But I agree with you, honey, retail honey is where the margins are. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get the best return and that's where you're going to make the most money. I, I am willing to, to go that route, but I'm, I'm used to taking a small amount of anything and making it big. Mm -hmm. So based on the current investment, we're limited to that's the max that we can get to, 50 yes. barrels per annum in yes. terms of at this revenue. At this present um, APRI that we have. Okay, mm -hmm. what does that translate to? Do you know what that translates to into bottles for sale, cases of honey for sale? The r roughly is uh, 325 to 35 um, bottles per, um, uh, per barrel. Per barrel. So, so that's, that's so what we're looking at. gives you 325 bottles? Yes. What size bottles? 750 ml. Can you show me what that looks like? Okay, that's a big bottle of honey. This bottle retailing right now between 140 and 180. Depends mm -hmm. on depends on the quality and the volume. And your quality, on. what is your quality like? Grade A. Grade A. Grade A. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, if that retails to 140, 180, I want to buy one before we leave today. <laughs> because I can't. At wholesale price. Absolutely, there is no way. Let me tell you, Alvin, I'm, I'm very interested. You know, this, this show is called Planting Seeds. 
and, and I'm the only farmer in here. And I'm, <laughs> I, I know I what you're talking. Right? He does chickens. That's, that's, that's not farming. That's, an, that's animal husbandry. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm interested. Um, um, I think you need a little bit more focus. I think you need somebody like me to come in and help you tell you what we need to go. I've done production. We do production in Jamaica. We have a bottling plant. I know all about equipment. I know everything. We do distribution. I, I do distribution throughout. So what's your offer? Um, right? I'm coming to that. Hold on. Make him an offer, Joe. It sounds like the percentage is going to be high because you see how he's selling it. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. Let me tell you. I, I, I'm interested. Logically, I, I'm a little bit concerned about devaluation. I think we can do a lot more. I don't think we should be putting down um, full buildings. We should be using equity, your equity to expand manufacturing, expand the apiaries, renting lands, not buying, um, renting warehousing facilities at this point in time. Um, yes, you have your land and you have your equity there, um, but let's go. Let's go find lands elsewhere. Let's bring in the equipment to pr increase our production. So I'll be, I'll be very interested in, in, in making you an offer. Um, 1.2. I, I don't have any problems in making that 1.2, but logically I need a, a, a larger share. And I can could, I could talk to you about it. Okay. I'll tell you what. When you guys get to a brand and a label and are ready to put it on the on, on shelf, give me a call. Okay. Chickens? I'm just going to buy the one bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just give you a bottle. <laughs> I think you'll be in good hands. Alvin, I look forward to working with you, man. Oh. This this is a sweet business. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, man. All right, good stuff. <laughs>Alvin, congratulations. How do you feel? Are you excited? Yes, I'm overjoyed here. I don't know, um, I wasn't expecting the, the investor to come in so quickly. Uh, Mr. Perez came in and he's going to invest in the company, turned out to be a B company. TNT Bee Company, sharing the best honey in the world, straight out of Trinidad. Congratulations, Alvin. Thank you so much for coming on the show, and I wish you all the success in the world. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Bee Man is exactly what planting seeds is all about. Here we have someone who's returning to Trinidad with an idea, grew a passion for his bees, he already started his business, he has historical financial statements, he knows where he wants to go, he has brought in the equipment, and guess what? Planting seeds gave him the perfect investor. Joe Perez, who's already in agriculture, would add so much value to what he already has. So I think this is a great match. I think we'll see a lot more from the honey industry, and hopefully we'll start to see it on the shelves for less than $100. We're here today at Very Exciting Things, specialists in branding any item for your business. Let's see what they can do for planting seeds. Welcome. Let's show you what we've got. Oh, this is nice. Well, what about this one? I like this one. Yeah. As for any business, it is important to choose items that fit your brand. The items you seek to represent your business should be tailored to your audience. Yeah. <laughs> now that we've chosen our items, let's get them printed. Thanks to very exciting things, we have the perfect items to market planting seeds. Follow your heart, make your mark. Time to get ready, honey. To chase your dreams and make them happen. It's why you do what you do, and why we're here for you. For your dreams to come true, that's the power of love. Your best interest at heart. Never miss a beat.
beat with the improved app from Yellow Pages. With new features like local news, flight and movie times, you're guaranteed to always be in the know with Yellow. Proximity search, gas station and ATM locations ensure you're in the right place at the right time. Download it from the Google Play Store or iTunes today. Job hunting is tough. You put yourself on a piece of paper and hope it will find you the perfect job. With so many options out there, it can be time consuming. What you really need is a simple way to find the job you're looking for. Caribbeanjobs.com has over 1,700 companies posting over 10,000 jobs. And it's easily accessed through either your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Find your fit at Caribbeanjobs.com and get the job you've been looking for. Hi, my name is Akil Aikman and I am COO and software engineer at Ultra Logistics, a young startup based in Jamaica. I have built, or we have built, an application called Shope. It's based around getting taxis so you can be where you need to be. Our application can track your rides, it can pay cashlessly, and you can even book your, your rides ahead of time. But why do you want this? Well, in Jamaica, you can't just walk out and get a taxi on the road. You have to call a taxi company. But that's difficult. You can call in, let's say you have a meeting, it's 30 minutes from now, you get 50 minutes to get there, right? So, you call a taxi. You call, you call, you call, you can't get through, and then eventually you do get through, the operator puts you on hold. This is frustrating. This is something that all Jamaicans go through. What we are offering is a simple application that will give you access to a taxi at a press of a button. No waiting online. We eliminate this hassle. And cancelling is just a press of a button. We can even show you your taxi information and your ride fares before you commit. We save time, we create customer value and give a great customer experience. And what we're asking is 165,000 US for 20% of our company. Let me ask, has the app been developed already? Is it in place or are you still in the software development stage? We have built a working prototype, right? We would like to now move to a closed beta, that's right. So, or we know our technology works. How much have you invested so far and where did that money come from? Personally, we have invested around 2 million Jamaican dollars. and that's come, in US? Yeah, two, and we have, um, we that's come from us mainly. This app is built for which platforms, iPhone and Android? Or? Right now we're focusing on Android, we're going to move to iPhone, but we're starting with Android because in Jamaica, that's what most people have. So the we, app is not completed, or did, did you all test that, that prototype on Android platform Yes, yet? we've tested on Android pro, the Android platform, and we also have a web app. So even if you don't have an Android phone, you still have access. So tell us a little bit about the market. You know, what, what do you see as the market potential? How many people are taking taxis and calling taxis and that sort of thing? And what's the revenue model? Is it that you take part of the taxi fare? How does it work? We're expecting on a modest, full operation, but still modest, we can get around 1,000 rides per day in full operation. We are expecting to, the average cost of those rides to be $730 Jamaica, and we want to take 25% of that from the driver. The drivers, though, unlike Uber or Lyft, are not everybody. They're not, they are established taxi owners. They are legally taxi drivers in Jamaica, which means that we can ensure a certain level of service and security to our customers. Sure. So these Raquel. taxi drivers will be <laughs> registered with Juta? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's interesting you brought that up. That's who we are talking to right now. They have shown great interest in using our platform to use with their taxi drivers, especially for tours. All right, tell us a little bit about your unique differentiator because there are similar services available that could potentially come into your market. So I know you've thought through this, so tell us a little bit about that. All right, the thing that I'm most excited about when it comes to show is actually our AI. We have built in a artificial intelligence that will, well, it enables, it interfaces with the customers through chat, um, with chat applications and through phone. So we have a voice and 
chat. We were, we've only tested it with Telegram and phones right now, so we can call in. The thing is, though, why this beta period is key, our AI at least needs to learn how people announce it. And because mm -hmm. maybe I speak clearly now, but the average Jamaican may not. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their own, their own way of speaking. So our AI needs to do that. After about three months, we expect, we should be able to shift all phone calls. So even if you don't have an app, if you go on to call, you can speak to the AI. If I was a taxi driver, why would I respond to a smart taxi call and have to pay 25% of that rather than a conventional call where I would not have to give up 25% of my fare? The thing is you do. When you are a conventional driver, you have to give up. Maybe it's not 25%, but it may work out to more. You have to pay the taxi company, and if you don't own the vehicle, you also have to pay the owner of the vehicle, right? Or 25% work so it's actually roughly the same or a little less depending on what their what their weekly income is but it's not as stressful as I need to make this much money before I can have something myself it is all right well I got this money and I know a quarter of it is has been taken out I don't even have to think about it anymore That's have you done that. any profit and loss calculations yes okay so what do you anticipate your profit to be in year one your net profit I'm being more conservative, so I don't expect to make a profit in year one simply okay. because the tools are expensive. The, main, the most expensive tool is actually the Google um, app license, which is around 11,000 US starting, right? But once we get past that hurdle, we should be breaking even somewhere in year two, and then year three, we'll be making us some nice money. We are hoping. Define nice. <laughs> okay, well, based on full operations in Kingston alone, we're expecting to make a profit of our own 40 million. Um, Akil, on my part, let me tell you, um, I think 165,000 US, you're going to need a lot more than that. Um, just from our advertising, marketing program to get that, um, um, uh, that, that penetration and the app going that you're going to want. Um, unfortunately, you know, I don't think I could plant a seed with you. Um, in this deal, I, I apologize. Um, I'm, I, I'm just not that interested in this particular aspect. It's not in my future vision to invest into a business like this. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think um, I'll be invested in this, this business. I think that as much as there are competitive reasons why it may not work, I think there are a lot of reasons why it could be incredibly successful and I look forward and hope for that for you, but unfortunately, not with me. Yeah, Akil, I mean, I like the idea. It's just too rich for my blood, so I'm gonna have to pass, unfortunately. All right, planting seeds, um, thank you for your time. Good luck, Akil. Good luck, good luck. Thank you. Hi, Akil. So, unfortunately, that did not go as planned. What was going through your head as all of our different investors were giving their verdicts? Well, I was very nervous and although the feedback or the outcome wasn't as favorable as I'd like or wasn't favorable at all, I still got a lot of good feedback. I still had a great experience and I think the next time I'll be better. <laughs> Shub, I'm really sorry you didn't get an investor. This is the type of investment, of course, first mover is really the one that will be successful. We've seen it work with Uber. Ten years ago, no one thought Uber might be a success. But here we are trying to do the same thing in the Caribbean, and we're not exactly seeing the commerciality. You've done your research. You know where your revenue is going to come from. I just don't think you got the matchmaker. here. You need the right investor who will believe in your app and who can take it further. So keep going, keep developing, get that app developed, and I think you will find someone to back you up. Hi, I'm Stephanie Pemberton, founder of Planting Seeds Caribbean, and today we're gonna to talk about cost cutting with Blink B Mobile. If you're an entrepreneur, well, at least a wise and frugal one, you'll know that generating profit is not just about pushing sales. It's also about cutting costs. So today I'm going to show you how planting seeds saved a lot of money on our phone bills using Blink B Mobile's hosted PBX.
At Planting Seeds, no one day is ever the same. And between Sarah, Amy, and myself, the marketing team, we have to keep in constant contact with each other because we need to speak to investors, entrepreneurs, and hopefuls that want to be on our show. So we've been using the hosted PBX in order to help us do this. So now let's take a look at the math. I speak to each of the team members about four times a day with an average call time of about 20 minutes to troubleshoot problems and manage operations. That means I'm spending at least 160 minutes on the phone with them per day, which is roughly 3,200 minutes per month. Every single month, my phone bill was higher than it should be because I was not using Blink B Mobile's hosted PBX. Now, let me show you how the Blink B Mobile's hosted PBX system saved me $2,560 just between my marketing team. So I'm going to pick up my landline and I'm going to give a call to Sarah. It's actually Sarah's extension, and she's not going to be able to answer on her extension, so it gets directly transferred to her cell phone. Hey, Seth. What's up? Hi, Sarah. How are things? Let's just get Amy on this line so we can talk about some deliverables that we have. Now, I'm going to conference in Amy so three of us can speak at once and we don't have to go back and forth all the time with communication. Hey, Seth. Hi, Amy. I have Sarah on the other line. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of those deliverables that we have to get ready for tomorrow. Sure, no problem. All right. So I was just able to talk to Amy and Sarah for free because we're obviously calling their extensions and it's still getting attached to their phones. And the best part about it is that I have three-way, I can conference call, so there's no back and forth and miscommunication about anything. Follow your heart, make your mark. Ready, honey. Chase your dreams and make them happen. It's why you do what you do, and why we're here for you. For your dreams to come true, that's the power of love. Your best interest at heart. Job hunting is tough. You put yourself on a piece of paper and hope it will find you the perfect job. With so many options out there, it can be time consuming. What you really need is a simple way to find the job you're looking for. CaribbeanJobs.com has over 1,700 companies posting over 10,000 jobs. And it's easily accessed through either your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Find your fit at CaribbeanJobs.com and get the job you've been looking for. Do you own a business with 3 to 55 employees? Then Beacon's Be Better Plan is perfect for you. Our comprehensive group plan provides major medical and group life benefits at competitive prices designed to make your small business be better. Call us at 623-2266 for a quote today. They say that a tidy desk is a tidy mind. Our next entrepreneur, Abigail, promises to declutter your life with an invention that keeps your belongings both organized and out of sight. The invention was designed by a busy mom for busy moms, but I'm pretty sure that anyone can see the value in this. The question is, will our investors go for it or will they just shelve the idea? Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Abigail. Uh, when, I, when I actually came up with this idea, I was living in a tiny apartment, and I found myself having to rummage through a lot my, on my dresser. So I eventually invested in a plastic wall organizer, which did the job, but it just looked tragic. And the other options were really expensive, so I really saw a need for something in between. That's how I came up with this US patented idea, the hidden organizer. It's both a picture portrait and a storage unit in one. It opens up to reveal two organizers where you could hide your mess. Um, the organizers are actually detachable, so you can take it away with you. The patent actually allows for the use of different materials. So this could be wooden, this could be plastic. 3D printing is also an option. A unit like this would go for if produced locally, it would go for $400 retail. 
I mean, where's your, your patent? Did you register a patent in Trinidad or in the States? In the States. And you have it patented already or patent yes. pending? Yeah, um, patent pending. What are you looking for? Oh, 770,000 for 20%. Is this being manufactured in the US or in China? This prototype was actually manufactured in Trinidad, but manufacturing in China is an option and in the US. What it's are your thoughts option. on the accessories that come inside? I see you've removed your makeup part, and but I, I, I would think that you would be thinking about adding a lot more um, accessories yes. to put well, inside. Well, the idea is to make it as customizable to suit the customer's needs as much as possible. So the inside could be hooks, it could be whatever they want it to be. It could be smaller compartments, bigger compartments. Abigail, I can definitely see me using something like this for my makeup, wrapping it up before traveling because it's always so difficult to pack and move it. So how many units are you thinking about for the 770,000? If produced locally, 2,000 units. If not produced locally, roughly, I think it would go up to maybe 2,500. Have you worked out what the cost per unit is for manufacturing? Yeah, in Trinidad, it's, it's 150. That's made in That's Trinidad right. by local manufacturers, local? Yes, by a local manufacturer. Wood manufacturers, furniture manufacturers? Yes, right. furniture. Okay. So if you got into your own importation of wood from Guyana and assembly plant here, it, it can even be, bring it, it down to yes. closer to $90, yes. $100, which is what you have to get to the plant. Yes. Yeah. How do we know that this thing will sell? Well, I did, uh, I did surveys on it, and 60% of women overall in Trinidad and in the United States said that they would buy it. But you did surveys in the United States? Yes. What, what was the sample size? Sample size was 500. Okay, wow. Yeah. And within the 500, it was 50% 50, 50 men, 50% women. And almost 100% of the women said that they would buy it. <laughs> okay. So I realized that to be my target market, women. Okay, so this reminds me, and forgive me, but this reminds me of you know one of those bathroom cabinets that has a mirror, and you open the mirror, and it has all your Correct. products yeah. inside. Medicine cabinet, right? Exactly. Right? No. Medicine like cabinet. a medicine cabinet. So yeah. what, what, is the, what is the differentiating factor between what you're offering and what I could probably go into a, a simple spaces and, and, and find some type of comparative right. product? Well, something like this does exist, but it's bigger. And the photo it can't be interchangeable. It's not interchangeable. And the insides can't come out. Right. You see, I see this as, as a loss leader. That unit is your loss leader that you have to bring down the cost on, and you sell it at cost or below cost. Yeah. Where your money is going to be made is the accessories that you're going to plug in inside. Right. So yeah. whether it's a box, whether it's a circle, whether it's something to hang a key, different applications. Whether chains, different, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where your money is well, going to be. Well, that can diff differ. So the insides could be whatever. That's the idea. My thing, Abigail, is that I would like to see you already talking to some distributor in the States. Because the Trinidad market is too small to rely on sales. manufacturing of, of this product and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and consistent sales. So really and truly, the, the, the key success factor for this product is if you tap into a larger market like the United States. I'm registered right now with a, a company called Invention Home. Yes. And they are trying to get me get someone to buy the license to the patent, di different stuff like that. But what's limiting me is that I haven't, I haven't produced anything. I don't have any sales to show. Correct. Yeah, but you have a prototype. Exactly. So if, if the prototype was to be accepted by a distributor or by someone who has the market, then finding the money to do the manufacturing and so on would be easy. So to me, the key now is not to find the money for the manufacturing. Okay, so I understand that I need to show some sales. So maybe if you could help me produce like 100, put it on the shelf, see how, it's, how it goes, and then we could renegotiate afterwards. What would you think would be the cost of producing the first 100? Because I know the economies of scale would be different between the 1,000. So how much would it cost? I would say for, for the most 200. You see, again, I think we're way ahead. We're too early because all the accessories, it's got to be some... some I draw too much talk. All right. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you the $20,000 20, for the 100 units with a right to buy into the company uh, for 40% of the company for $300,000. So you're offering 300000 I was going to fund 20000 to manufacture the first 100 units with a right to purchase up to 40 percent, well, to purchase 40 percent of the company for three hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Well, I'll match your offer. I'll offer you the same twenty thousand dollars to produce the first hundred units, um, with the option to um, buy equity of forty percent for three hundred thousand. 
much, Alan. I'm sure you could do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> I know you're in distribution. How can you help me get this on the shelf and even help me produce more than 100, which I know is going to sell really quickly? I mean, I've, I've close relationships with a lot of places in Trinidad, um, Superfan, Massey, um, and even by one thing, to get this product out. Um, okay, so, just, yeah. so you can help me with distribution and get Oh it. yeah, definitely, because I own a distribution company, so okay. it's pretty much up my alley. So I just need to know that you will be there with me at costs are higher than 20,000. Yeah, I mean, definitely, you I mean, me. once we look at price points, I'll definitely be willing to help. So if it, even if it goes up to like 50,000, you would well, be I there mean, with me? Well, I mean, within reason, yes. <laughs> I would be willing to help, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that's a good offer. As well, I know that. No, I, I was just, I was oh. just thinking that, I, you know, it's great to have a partner who can help with the distribution, but in addition to that, you may need to tap into a network and I think Plot would be a fantastic network yeah. for this product. I was willing to go in with Joseph and to be able to sort of work through the details of what we could potentially do together. I like Sheldon, but I know Joseph better. <laughs> um, I would also be interested in, in, in coming into that because now that changes everything because we have a ready market for the A product. network of powerful network women. Of so I mean, uh, again, I so like all Sheldon. of us. All I like Sheldon, <laughs> but I, if I could come in with, with two of you all, I would gladly come in because now, but now we have to change things. It can't be forty percent. Um, maybe, maybe a, a, a little bit more, um, because you're going to get three investors with a lot of, a lot of opportunity, a lot of contacts, and a lot of knowledge. I represent young blood, right? So <laughs> definitely, you'll get young energy from me. Of course. Joseph, I'm going to join. I'm going to join. I know I'm a little older. I still have hair in my head, too. Excuse me. <laughs> let's all do it together. Yeah, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Yeah. Yeah, I have no difficulty with that. No problem to that. I think that four people would be too hard for me to, to manage. Mm -hmm. So I really want to stick with one. So and she seems to be looking at you, Sheldon. <laughs> so who do you want? Well, in that case, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Thank you very much. In that case, I'm, I'm done. Um, well, if you need just one, not for me. Not for you. Right, so you're back to Sheldon or Joe. You're back to Sheldon or Joe. Well, I think that Sheldon would be better able to help me with distribution and getting it out there and stuff like that. And design. And design. Definitely. So, I think this is a great product. I mean, I'll definitely help you with the design. I think we could take this internationally. Just need to put in some work, and I think we can make it really successful. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm excited. Me too. We can do some business. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Thank Congrats. you. Well done. Thanks. Good presentation. So, what um, eventually was your decision-making process? I eventually went with, with Sheldon because I had my eye on him. Okay. <laughs> and he's good with distribution. He will help me through those channels. Well, I love the confidence you have in your product, and I think that's exactly what you need moving forward. Congrats, Abigail. Thank and you. I wish you the best. Thank you. <laughs> very interesting pitch and a very interesting point. All four investors were willing to come in and she turned them down. And I think it was a good idea. It's very difficult for an entrepreneur to deal with four different perspectives from four different investors. It could be very intimidating. In many ways, bringing an investor into a project is like a marriage. You have to deal with the personalities and you have to deal with the issues that comes with that process. And to deal with four big personalities will be challenging for anyone, least of all, a brand new entrepreneur. So her decision to just deal with one person was good for her in the end. We have to see how this works out. Do you own a business with three to 55 employees? Then Beacon's Be Better plan is perfect for you. Our comprehensive group plan provides major medical and group life benefits at competitive prices designed to make your small business be better. Call us at 623-2266 for a quote today. Follow your heart, make your mark. 
Time to get ready, honey. To chase your dreams and make them happen. It's why you do what you do, and why we're here for you, for your dreams to come true. That's the power of love. Time ready. Your best interest at heart. Never miss a beat with the improved app from Yellow Pages. With new features like local news, flight and movie times, you're guaranteed to always be in the know with Yellow. Proximity search, gas station and ATM locations ensure you're in the right place at the right time. Download it from the Google Play Store or iTunes today. Job hunting is tough. You put yourself on a piece of paper and hope it will find you the perfect job. With so many options out there, it can be time consuming. What you really need is a simple way to find the job you're looking for. CaribbeanJobs.com has over 1,700 companies posting over 10,000 jobs. And it's easily accessed through either your computer, tablet or smartphone. Find your fit at CaribbeanJobs.com and get the job you've been looking for. Within the Caribbean region, there are so many hidden gems, and by that I mean local experiences that not even the locals know about. Our next business, Wonderscape, is an app that promises to do just that by connecting people to authentic local experiences. Through the app, they can discover, share, and book fun things to do locally. Let's see if entrepreneur Stephen James can convince the investors that his idea is the hidden gem. Hi, I'm Stephen James, CEO and co-founder of Wonderscape. And I'm Dion Santana, CTO and co-founder. So question, have you ever traveled to a destination, left, you had fun, you enjoyed yourself, but then you learned of an experience or something you really wish that you had done while you were there? I ever wanted to travel like a local? Well, now there's an app for that, Wonderscape. Wonderscape. Wonderscape is a new and exciting travel app where you can discover authentic experiences. You can share lists with friends and connect with like-minded wanderers. As well as you can pay and book on the go. So from the market research that we've conducted, we found a couple pain points that apply to both wanderers and tour operators alike. Firstly, travelers are most times greeted with one-size-fits-all packages that are not at all tailored to their unique interest. Secondly, you have a situation where there is no app at all in the market. There is no service, there's nothing that provides that kind of service where experiences are personalized and categorized based on niches of travel. So for instance, eco, food, adventure, etc. And also there's no app that offers real social engagement, allowing you to invite friends and then plan a trip or even a weekend. So is so this app already developed? It is developed, it's ready to launch the market. Both platforms? Yes, web and mobile. So what we found, that there, there are a lot of big players like TripAdvisor, Airbnb and the like that are coming into this space. They've acquired startups ranging in the billions of dollars, but the Caribbean market remains underserved. Right. And there is no opportunity or nobody innovating in that space. Um, and so Wonderscape stands at the forefront ready to take that charge. Are you all the developers? Or? We are. Yes. Okay. Right, so Wonderscape addresses each of these problems directly and then some. What we are requesting is an investment of 525,000 TT dollars in exchange for 15% of our business. And what we will do with this money is raise awareness locally, expand our presence regionally and globally, for the data marketing strategy, of course, and reach a profitable model that we can scale, that we can ensure scalability. Where's your revenue coming from? Revenue, we, our current revenue stream is commission-based, so we take a 10% commission on top of the cost of the experience. The insider doesn't get, have to absorb any cost whatsoever. So credit card processing fees and everything is based, is put, um, absorbed within that 10%. Okay, you know. but back to the revenue question. So yes. we would have paid, the, the user, the, the operator, would have, the user would have paid the tour operator yes. directly through the app? Yes, directly through the app. And you would earn a commission based There's on that. There's a 10% commission on 10% commission based on. On top of on that, that cost, yes, yes. 
So why 525 for 15 percent? That's ridiculous. How so? Well, that's a 3.5 million, million dollar valuation. valuation. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I, I, given that it's not proven and you don't have any sales yet, right. 3.5 million valuation is high. You think it's high? Okay. Significantly high. All right. So, it's, it's in high. terms of us not having sales, I get that. All right. But it is a proven model. We already have partnerships with CDC, THA. We already are working with people up the islands and scaling. We have interest as far as India. We have an average now of about 13 million visitors to the Caribbean alone. Tapping into just 0.1% of that will ensure our profitability and success. Mm -hmm. What would be your strategic advantage right. to someone else who's already launched a product or someone else who already has a presence and a brand? So firstly, there is nobody else. We literally have personal market advantage. Now, there are persons outside the Caribbean. of the region. Right. Mm -hmm. We have added features into the app where you can actually engage with friends socially, plan a trip, right? Um, in terms of being able to provide personalization through experiences. What you're telling me is the difference between TripAdvisor and you mm -hmm. is that you, I, through your app, I'll be in direct communication with the tour operator. But you pay 10%. The, the, and I'll pay you 10% to do that. Right. But rather than go through, I'm going to Greece next month. Mm -hmm. I go on to Greece, I go on to things to do, I book if a thing, going, and then I go on right. to his website and he sent me a quote. So if you book, if you book through TripAdvisor with Viator, and now the margins are bigger. I can guarantee that, right? Because they've had the number, they have the tractions, they have the numbers, they can back it up. So you're looking at about 15% margins, right? Outside of the direct contact, the convenience of being able to go to an app within the Caribbean and say, I want to find this and that to do from within one app, not having to go to a advisor, look here, look that, is a lot more convenient for persons. Right. Yeah. So tell us about your revenue projections. Let's, right. let's understand that and how it goes, yeah? Okay. How, how, how does this all make sense? The average cost of an experience on Wonderscape is about 50 US. Through the conversion, 300. Good? If we look at the 10% that we're adding on top of that, the booking, the number of bookings we'll have, is it? 775,000. So it's about $725,000 per month that we will be generating. In Inside. bookings? In bookings. In, in, in terms of our commission, in terms of the commission that we make, just based on 0.1% of that market, that's if we meet that market. And that's, that is not just a projection, it is proven. How yeah. so? How is it proven? Yeah. Because of the fact that that number that we're looking at is a 6% increase from last year to this year in terms of arrivals. No, right? My question is, how are you going to get that 0.1%? Through marketing methods, through partnerships, through so that's strengthening. That's not yet proven. The, the, yeah. the right. capture right. of right. that 0.1% right. so is not yet because, proven. Because she asked about projections. Mm -hmm. right? So we're looking at projections. So even if we fall short of the 0.1%, we're still guaranteed to become profitable within two and a half years. So let me yeah. tell you, just based on the way that it's structured and the, the, the context of the kind of data that you have, I mm -hmm. think, you know, 30 million, 1%, mm -hmm. it's, it's, too, it's too high level for me. I think that you need to do a lot more work to figure out what your actual market capture might be. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, it's not for me. It's a great name, but I mean, this is not up my alley. Mm -hmm. It's just not mm -hmm. my expertise. Um, I don't think I can help you all with this to, to grow this business, so mm -hmm. for that reason, um, I, I wouldn't be invested. Guys, for me, um, even people with doubles now have an app. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah that's where we reach into that. Right, so every right. tour operator has an app or a Facebook page and everything like that into that. Uh, guys, wish well, you well. Yeah. Thanks. No I, 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 can't, I can't do this. No problem. I'm out as well, guys. I just don't think that the, the charging the consumer mm -hmm. to use the app uh, would, would work out. It would work. Yeah, I think you need to focus on the on the back end and have the the, the tour operators and so on. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, pay your commission. Yeah. Wish you well. Yeah. Okay. Good luck, guys. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderscape is a very unique idea, but it's really targeting a very niche market. The investors were a little bit concerned of exactly where the revenue was going to come from and if there was going to be enough volume for them to get a return on their investment. Wonderscape needs to develop this a lot more for it to become viable. They also need to look for other avenues of revenue which will really make it a commercial event. Wonderscape, keep going. I think there are people who are more interested in what the local tour guides have to say than the big tour companies. So there is a niche market 
but it's how do you find that niche market and how do you build it to be something that is commercial. It might be just right for you to continue as an entrepreneur on your own, making enough money just for the two of you. It may not be big enough for wide state investment. So do it on your own, get that started. When you build the volumes, you should come back. And that brings us to the end of our first episode of Planting Seeds. Thanks so much for tuning in and keep watching every week as we make more entrepreneurs' dreams come true.